Hello. Good evening. Welcome to episode number four of the series Amiga Assembly. Let's make a game. I hope you're having a good evening. Please subscribe to um, our YouTube and hit likes on our videos. As you can see, I released episode number three of this series. This one and the next one will be the last two that I will be sharing on YouTube for now. I will continue, I will finish the series, so don't get me wrong. Um, but because I feel I need to give something back to the uh, to my Patreons, so I will hold them a little bit back. Uh, of course, then they will be on YouTube, but anyway, it should get you going. There's enough uh, material to, let's say, start writing again. Some of the code is based from the book that I stream every Saturday in Italian and Sunday in English. So, this should, it's really a simple game for beginners, it's just to, um, let's say, tie up the book and uh, so that you start coding uh, an Amiga game. Eventually, I will start other series where I will just be coding games for the Amiga using it will not be for beginners like this series, using all that I know, let's put it this way, um, to uh, do some, some games uh, for the Amiga. And also the format will be, they will be a little bit different because the aim here is to teach you in a way, um, in the sense I'm teaching you and applying what we learned from the book. But the ones that I will do, it will be just me coding. And that's it. It's like me coding on my own, in my own room, in my room, in my, in my um, what they call it, men's cave, you know. But I'm just streaming it. So that is all. You can ask questions, but I will not be teaching in a way. But this is a series after this one. I have no intention of starting that yet. I do not have enough time. Um, but I'm, I just wanted to say uh, what uh, I have in mind uh, for next year. This series will be about 10 to 15 episodes, depends. Uh, we are in episode 4. Um, we are, by what we do today, we will be, we will have done, achieved quite a bit um, to what we need to do. Um, As I said, YouTube is our main uh, thing where I share all my all my streams because I know that most of you do not, um, most of you that do not follow me either on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. I know that you watch them in uh, in some other time because I see the number of views increasing on the videos, so I know that that is happening. Um, for example, you can see here, episode number two, this I released yesterday, but this one, uh, how much it increased from last week. And I can say, what is episode number one? There it is. There is episode number one. So it is, they do increase. Uh, I know if I, for effect. Um, if you like what we do, you can also support us on uh, Patreon. As I said, Patreon has got more videos out here. You can see a lot more. I'm not logged in, so it should not be displaying. Anyway, this is the page, the Facebook page. Um, but on Patreon, you will see a lot more. Some of them are only visible to Patreons. 
and some are, av are available to you to watch even though you are not subscribed and same thing on um, on coffee we have also a telegram group if you want to come there but I suggest you come to, to discord I mean I use them both because there are some people on this one and some people on uh, some people on discord but discord has got more viewers so whichever you prefer but you have direct access to me via um, via these so having said that so please follow us on twitter instagram and of course here twitch and like our facebook page and our youtube youtube videos and join us on discord and uh, on, te on telegram of course join our facebook groups if you uh, like also to follow us on facebook the game i'm just going to remind all the game is from a friend of mine that did it for the commodore 64 i need to switch to this mode um, the game is this game we are building it for the Amiga ignore the fact that the instructions are Italian so basically you are this guy falling in a tube and you need to avoid the objects and in the middle you can only stay there for a small time so you cannot stay forever in the middle Oops. when there is no choice then you lose energy when you cannot anyway you are getting the gist of it uh, and you can see energy and depth how far you went through the tube um, right now i have various objects which my friend designed on dog but you can design more and send them to me if you want to um actually i prefer if you guys send me the graphics because i'm not uh, quite keen on the on the uh, on the graphics that I have so far. Anyway, so that is the game. I'll go back to the browser. And uh, what I was going to say, uh, I think it's here. Yeah, this is the game that we are building, the guy falling, and I already have some graphics, but you can go to the font editor of Aussie. I'm going to share the link, but you know you can find all these links in the... Uh, you can create the sprites here, okay? Um, in this editor and you can either send me the uh, raw file or the um, binary code whatever you prefer as long as I can load it and then I can uh, see it you are more than welcome to do so um, I'm using this one it's simple it's you know you can draw a sprite it's only 16 by 16 so more than enough i mean you can change the by the way you can change the resolution etc but we are only using um four color sprites for now so no need to um, you know change the settings just maybe change the colors and you can start drawing as it is um note that there is this page, okay, where you get all the links related to coding for the Amiga. 
Okay, this is a page that I am constantly updating and it is for your own benefit basically and I believe if you type explanation book page you get the link there you go so this should help you in learning more uh, the Amiga by the way guys the first two episodes okay if you notice the first one was me setting up a screen we needed a screen for the Amiga the Amiga is not like the Commodore 64 that gives you a screen when you can start typing okay it gives you nothing so you need to create a screen uh, of course I'm talking about Amiga hardware programming two the second one I explained the code that I did in the first episode and I also explained how the copper works because the copper is an important uh, thing uh, in what we are building. Even though I had explained it in the book, I did a revision of it. Episode number three is where we actually started coding. However, the coding that we've done was snippets that I collected from the book so that we can start doing the game. In fact, we've used some and some we use them, but we haven't really implemented them to be used by the game yet. But they are there and they were explained because of what we are going to do today. They were in preparation. Okay, so this is how the game is taking shape. For those that are interested, there is the link. You can find it under the videos and on YouTube. And there is the link to the sources of each episode. Okay, so for episode one, we used this code. For episode two, we used this code. So we are always increasing the code, but I'm putting them as a separate file for you to download. Okay, um, so each episode will have its own source. This should help you in you know, learning more um, the Amiga, okay, by having access to the source. I do encourage you to submit sprites if you can, because we are going to do sprites today. And I will show you uh, something about the extension also today. Um, so, let's jump to visual code so you I have already told you that we are using an extension that you do not need an Amiga setup configured configure to be able to um, start coding the, the extension will do everything for you okay so this is quite uh, a handy thing. I was saying about the extension. Uh, the extension you need remember to uninstall, uh, uninstall the old extension and install the new one, and you need to get it from the marketplace. You need the Amiga extension. I'm going to show it so that you. Here it is. It's this one, okay? You need to install, if you type Amiga, it will come up and you will recognize it from the ball, the Amiga ball, uh, by Paul Ranger. Okay, so please install this extension, make sure you remove what you had before, um, and you should be fine. There is one caveat to that. When we run our game, I'm going to run it, okay, and notice that it's going to build. Uh, win UAE config um, and we'll run our code. Okay. Need the money to go to here. So, this is our game so far. 
okay? We managed to display a sprite last time, but we haven't done anything. Now, the reason why I didn't continue last time is because um, of um, is because of the um, joystick. So you need to configure the joystick, and to do that, unfortunately, because every joystick is different the way it is detected, you need to do some setting, and I'm going to show you here how to do it. So you press F12, okay. Now I cannot make the screen bigger. I mean, but I hope you'll be able to follow me, okay? Then you go to uh, game ports, okay? You change the joystick, okay, to your joystick when it's listed. So my in my case it is a PS3 PC game gamepad. So I put that. Then, okay, actually. This is to see if the joystick is detected. Before we continue, we go to configuration. We do, we click on default, okay, and we do a load, okay. And notice that it's like resetting itself. I made a backup of it before I changed it, so I created dot underscore bak. However, then you go to game ports, okay? Now that we know it's detected, our joystick, and it's selected, we make sure that it is selected again, and everything is fine. And then we save on the default config. The load, okay, of the default config is very important, else you save nothing, okay? So you will overwrite the default config. This is why I suggest you make a backup of the default config first, so you do load and then give it another name and do save. Okay? Uh, once you've done that, you go and do this to change in game parts and then in configurations make sure that you have the default config selected and you to save. This is this is important, okay? Because else you will not be able to continue to write code and write a game and test it with the joystick. Unless you're going to just use the keyboard, but in our case we're going to use the joystick. So make sure you follow this procedure. As I said, click on default load. That's the first thing. Okay, it's very important that you do load. Okay, then you can save it. I can give it another one. Config two, and like that, it is saved. Okay, so you can see I have config two created. I'm sorry, it is a bit small, but you can see the gist of it. Then go to default, load it again. Okay, go to game ports. Save, change it to what you need, save, and then, um, sorry, change it to what you need, go to configuration, and then in having default selected, click on save, okay? And you should be fine. You, you cannot, uh, because I discussed this with Paul, okay? Um, you cannot, um, we cannot provide you with a configuration for this, okay? Because every joystick is different. So you need to do this for your own uh, config. But yeah, um, you need to do this and then we can, you can start using the joystick. So I explained the extension. Hence, <coughs> we start We start with the um, where is it? Why I'm not finding things today? Uh, okay, get okay, So
this is what we did in episode 3 and 2, but basically mainly episode 3, okay? Uh, you, I can make this bigger, yes. Okay, you should be able to see it. Now, today we're going to do wait for raster line so that we can sync things. Read the joystick. We, we already did this routine, but we are going to uh, make a bit of uh, things and move the player. Then we might need to add a delay. I do not know, but I have included this just in case. We might need to add a delay because maybe it will be too fast. Okay, it depends. And we will do the random number generator. Now, this is in advance, it's not yet. We're not going to use it. But we will need to prepare for it. Okay, so that's what I have uh, planned for the stream. Okay, so let's make this small and let's continue. So, in our code, okay, in our code, we have done, okay, so far, initialize the bit planes for the Amiga, initialize the colors, remember these are all in the, in the copper, and initialize the sprites, okay, then, the, we call this, okay, before we even actually take control of the system, okay? Then we have this that makes the computer, uh, makes the Amiga compatible with whether we are using AGA or not. And we initialize our copper. Then we print something to the screen. This was just for, because we will need a print routine. So, so far, <clears throat> we have done these four routines, okay? These three and this one, okay? We have a um, press left, left mouse button to exit. Normally, you don't exit from a game, but in this case, we might need it. So I made the option to exit from the game. Eventually, we will be looping. But for now, it's justified. Because we are still setting up things. To see these three and what they do, please watch episode number three, okay? Um, I explained them all including this one, the print to screen. But I'm going to run it again to see what we are doing. As I said, we really started from episode number three doing this. Um, I explained in episode number one the startup file, okay, and even in, in episode number two, that is a standard thing that you normally use to take control of the Amiga, which I you need to accept this file as is, okay? You unless you saw all episodes in relation to the book because this is in chapter eight. But for now, just ignore, just accept how we are using it, okay? If you to the include and then to these settings because these are related to it, you're fine. Let's run it again. By the way, the in the lower right hand corner. The window that you see is of my other Amiga. This is, um, if I want to show you something from the book, I have 
uh, my real Amiga, okay? Um, instead of using the extension, it is there ready for us to be able to use it. It, or it can be that something happens and then I continue using it, but it's my backup in a way for everything in terms of uh, something happens with the extension. So, as you can see, we have a screen, so we open the screen, okay? We open the screen, we loaded an, Im an image, not loaded, we are, this could be a part of our source file has got also an include to include an image. So, okay, this is our image. We displayed the sprite onto the screen and we wrote some text. Okay, this text is just for test purposes right now. So, now the next thing is to move the sprite, no? To be able to move it in, in, on the screen, okay, somehow. We know that it needs to move only left and right, but I'm just going to show it moving in all directions. Let's start from there. And then we can eliminate um, how much it can move. So, The first thing uh, we're going to do is in the source files, and this was prepared even last week, so it's part of the snippets. We have do wait for raster. Okay, now I took the liberty, okay, of commenting it. In great detail okay so even if you haven't done the book you should still be able to understand it and I even I'm even showing okay the registers and what each bit of the register means and I even put the both registers next to each other which you'll be able to see once I make this larger Okay, so this is here you have 16 bits because each register on the Amiga is 16 bits, but you can put them next to each other because they are consecutive. So why it's possible to read both of them together because they are consecutive. The first register, uh, VH Pozar, okay, is made up of, as I said, 16 bits. And the first eight are the horizontal, okay, and because the Amiga can wait for a raster line even on the horizontal line, not just like Commodore 64 that can only wait on the vertical line and these are the bits for the vertical line now notice that for the vertical line we have also these bits in v pos r okay i'm not going to explain these you don't need to know them they are something else okay what we are interested into the raster line okay and i explained why i call it the raster line and not the copper line because in those days we had cathode ray uh, cathode ray tubes and whether we used the copper or not there was always a raster line the lines being drawn on the screen was a raster line and i'm making a distinction between the copper line and the raster line. We are measuring, we are waiting for a raster line um, of the beam, basically. Now, this gives us vertically, this gives us 
eight positions, uh, eight, eight bits. So that is two, five, six maximum. However, it has more bits into this register. We will only use this bit. Okay? These two are there for when you have graphic cards. We are assuming we have a standard Amiga 500. Okay? So, in fact, these were not used, I believe, in, um, in OCS and DCS. But they, they were added afterwards. Uh, so we need only V8, okay, from it. Hence, from all of them, now I combined both of them, okay, together. Okay, so you can see the same registers, but one next to each other. And these are the vertical positions, okay, from bit 8 to bit 18. In our case, it's to bit 16. So, and that's why I put the letter Y under them. This is what we need. The others, we need to ignore them. Hence, I'm going to skip a bit. I'm going to skip the first two lines of code, okay? The next line of code is move and move.long. So we are moving a 32 bit address, okay? For A5. That means A5 is a standard. In A5, we have DFF. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, and that is set up for us in the startup file. So A5 is global, let's say that, with the value DFF000. Zero, zero, zero. So when we say for A5, that means DFF004. Zero, zero, okay, you can see it here. So we are reading the two 16-bit values, okay, from DFF04 and DFF06, which is we are reading registers VPOSR and VHPOSR, okay? When you put them next to each other, you see all these bits. So we read all these bits. We are only interested, okay, and this is why uh, I skipped the, um, the first two instructions. We are only in interested in these where we have Y, okay. So to tell, to make sure that we only read those values, okay, we end with 1FF00 which you see here, okay? Remember the 1FF00 in front of it because that's a long, has got 0, 0, 0 in front of it, okay? It's something that sometimes might get you, okay? Always remember a number if we are reading long that has got zeros in front, if we are not using them. So we end the zero, the value that we read, with the one, which is this value, and like that we make sure that we read these bits, okay? Then we compare them with one to C. One to C, okay, is raster line 300. We do not care about these bits, as I said, and the bits in front, they are zero because we ended them, okay? So we have 
one to C. We make sure that we are on Rustel line 300. If we are not, we jump to weight one, and we continue doing this till we are. Now, in the Amiga, it can happen also on the Commodore 64, but on the Amiga, it's more can happen even more. You can do a lots of instructions in one raster line, on one raster line. Because of this, you need to make sure that you are not uh, on the same raster line. Why? If you still are, you, you will continue to loop. So if you notice, it's a copy uh, of this loop. We have it down here. We do that so that so that we are sure okay we are not trying to execute the code twice okay when you have short code it can happen it's not going to happen in a game but right now we have nothing to be fair so we need to make sure uh, this um, probably in the future we, we will be able to remove this uh, this compare Okay, but right now we need to have it because our code is, is very small. And to be fair, it is good practice um, to have this. I mean, we are not racing, we are not building the extreme, you know, demo or the extreme game. It is still fine. We are building the simple game just to show a proof of concept that you are able to build the game. I would like to enhance the game in the future, but for now, it's a simple game. What you saw for the Commodore 64, we're going to build it for the Amiga. So this code is in the book. Okay, you will hear me referring to the book because I am doing this stream, this series, to prove that from the book till chapter 7, you are able to do a game. Hence why I am referring to the book. As I would not be referring to the book, because I would just be explaining the code and you, you'll need to know it already. Um, in this case, I'm saying that it is covered in the book and it is exactly like this. It's commented in Italian. I changed it in English. But I added more comments to it. So we're going to add this routine okay, to our game. It's not always that I will have the code prepared, but code that is already in the book in the book. I do not need to, you know, be typing it. I just need to explain it. I think it makes more sense that I explain it than typing it. Um, so for those that haven't yet arrived in the book where, the, where they should be. Okay. So we will add this somewhere here. No, let's put it before the read joystick and even before the print info. Yeah. So we have our uh, wait for Rust, okay? And we already also have the routine read joystick, but we are not, so we already have two routines that we are not calling, okay? Um, so we have here, we are doing all this, but we are not calling read joystick. And we are not calling um, the vertical uh, wait for raster. And there's a reason, of course, but um, it will uh, it will come all together uh, eventually. So we have done that. There's another routine that I'm going to cover which is move a sprite, okay? So wait for us, that we did it, and we're going to do move a sprite. 
Now, I'm going to bring back my slides, not slides, my tablet notes. And I want to show you something. So, if you recall, and for those that don't know, don't worry, I'm going to explain it anyway. Sprites are made up of the following. There is one word that has got the Y and X, V start, H start. Okay? Then there's another word, okay, which has got, which is divided, of course, so a word is, is two bytes, no? So the first byte is V start. The second byte is H star. The second word, hence the third byte, is V stop. The fourth one is a control register, okay? So, or special register. We will be covering that in a minute. Then there is the sprite data, and sprite data is like having two bit planes, okay? So here you have the, because we have four colors, no? And bit zero being transparent. So here we have bit plane one, let's say, where we put pixel zero and one on and off. Here we have bit plane two, where we put pixels zero and one to have our colors. But you need to Im imagine both of them on top of each other. This gives us four possible colors with color zero being the transparent okay and this is how we're able to have three colors four colors but zero transparent when you finish your sprite data okay you have two words and these two words are zero contain zero okay so going back to show you the sprite structure because we have a sprite on the screen remember so some of this I know I already said it in, in number in episode number three but I'm repeating it because today we are uh, going to use it quite a bit so here are the two words or four bytes that make up our uh, our two words okay so we have this v start the h start the v stop and the um, special bits and i even commented this here okay these values okay are the values where we specify the x, this is the, sorry, this is the y, this is the x, and this is, remember, we need to tell it, the y twice, okay? So we have the v start, where it starts, and the v end, or v stop, okay? So if our sprite is, is 16 pixels high, so if we start at line 40, x, then we end at line 50x. I think that is um, quite easy. We are not using any control bits for now, so we can ignore them. Then we have our data for the sprite, and then we have our two words, okay, which contain zero. So, to move this sprite, we need to be updating these three data pointers, at these three bytes, okay? And that's what we will do with our joystick routine. We will 
be updating a value x and y and then x and y will be transferred to this sprite data structure for that is standard in the Amiga because in the end it's a data structure how the Amiga needs these sprites to be formatted this label here is to tell me that sprite data ended okay and this is to tell me the sprite size in including everything okay um, if you see sprite end minus sprite data i am i do this but i doesn't mean that i'm using it it's just that i have the value ready if i need to it doesn't cost me anything so How are we going to update these values? Recall last week we did reading joystick and I explained that if we go left we add one with um, if we sorry if you go right we add one if we go left we decrease one you can see it see them here sub and add and then for the y we either decrease or increase and we are increasing these values okay we have this when we are reading the joystick we are actually storing those values okay into this let's say memory location to these variables okay which are where so a sprite can move from 0 to 512 511 to be honest but there's only a, a, an area where it is visible okay so we don't have 512 to be honest 512 positions but it's a word um, we have 9 bits for the x and we also have nine bits for the Y, but we still, we do not have 512, actually we have 318. How much we can move it into the Y? I've never bothered to check how much it is in the X, but in the Y I know it is, uh, sorry, 312, not 318. Anyway, so the values, when we move it, will be stored into this two, um, two locations. Then we need a routine that reads these two variables and displays this sprite to the screen based on these two variables. Hence, I'm going to bring another routine which is called move sprites. To be honest, it's more instead of move, it's more position sprites because actually it's positioning the sprite. And this is also from the book. So I'm just going to explain it. I think this is the last routine that I will be bringing from the book, at least for now. After this routine, it will be hard coding, basically everything. So. These are all uh, routines that help us out in building up our game. So, we have the four bytes or two words that are make up this sprite before we have our data. These are divided as I said, the first one is V start. So this is where we specify the Y position. This is where we specify the H position, position, okay? The X position. And this one <clears throat> is where we specify the end position in the Y direction, okay? But we have only eight bits. We need another bit. 
and those bits are here. So I'm going to leave the H position, the, the, the X position for now for by itself. Okay. So I'm going to skip bit zero of the control byte, okay, which is byte three. So for the start position for V start, we have these eight bits plus bit two of the control word, okay. For the V stop, we have these eight bits plus bit one. This gives us in both of them five one two positions in the Y. But as I said, the maximum we can do uh, is through one two. If you do more, nothing happens. I mean it 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 doesn't um this bright is not visible. H is handled a little bit differently. Notice there is not a these all start with V0, okay, or S0. So this is the V start and this is the V stop. H starts from bit one from H1, sorry. So the high bit H8 is bit seven. So this means that when we move if we had to increment only this byte, okay, we move every two pixels, not every one pixel, because we start from H1. H0 is in the control byte register, okay, and it is bit 1. So, if we do, if we have this bit and this bit on, okay, Sorry, let me let me say this. If we have this bit on, okay, we didn't specify one, but we specified two because there is this bit. If we specify, if we leave this zero, we will never update it. And if we specify this bit and we make it one, we think it is pixel 2 okay position number 2 but no it is position number 4 because there is that one and it continues like that so when we do this one okay it's not position 1 to 8 okay but it's position 256 Hence, we need to account for all this. And it's quite an easy routine, to be fair. It might sound complex, there, but it's quite an easy one. Let me see if I manage to have it all in one go on the screen. Leave it like that for now. Okay, so a sprite is not, it, there's an area where it is not visible. Okay, so because of that, I'm going to bring again my nodes. And we need another one, which is this one. Ignore what I have on the written on the on the right side. What you need is what we need is this one. Okay. So this is our screen where the blue is. This is the outer part, the part where we do not that we do not see. Okay. This position, this corner, the first corner of where we normally say this is pixel zero, comma zero is actually on the Amiga pixel to see, okay, comma, 
40 hex. So y is 2c and x is 40. So 2c is 44, I think it is, line 44, and the x is 64. So from here to here is 64. Sprites, if this is our sprite, it's this corner, the first pixel, where how sprites are positioned. So if we want to position the sprite into this corner, we specify 2c, 40. Yx. Remember, it's not xy, but yx. However, to simplify, okay, the routine cal calculates this for us, okay? Hence, the first thing, let's say we specify position 0 on the y, it automatically adds 2c, okay? So we do not need to think about those values that I just mentioned. Then, I mean, add the instruction is, is obvious. The routine needs three parameters. I was going to forget to say this. In A1, we need this sprite address. We need, I'm going to bring it on the right side. It needs the address where we have our sprite structure okay so it needs that it needs to point to here then it needs in the zero where we want to start vertically okay and that is a value between zero to two five five for now accept that it's from zero to two five five okay in theory it's more in the one it needs the x position from 0 to 320, 319 to be fair. And then in D2, it needs the height of the sprite. Our sprites are all 16 pixels high, at least for now. We can change that, but at least for now, we do them 16. Okay? Hence, Remember these uh, these uh, values, okay? That we need. We read the zero. We said in the zero we have the vertical, so we are going to do the vertical part now. We read the zero. After sorry, we add two c to the zero, and we move and notice. We read a word, but we are moving, so this is a word, and we are moving a byte, okay, into A1. A1 points to the first byte, so where we have our 40, okay? So we moved the lower bits, okay, if we were, let's say, 257, Okay, just to be clear, okay, we move the difference because we have 256, so we move 1 into the first uh, here, okay, and then we need to set the high bit for the V, so V start is bit 2 so we make sure if that bit is set so bit test we're testing if bit 8 of our value is set if it's set then we go and set it we are setting it here here we're doing a test bit test and here we're doing a bit set if it's not set, 
we clear it, we make sure it's clear. So bit clear. Okay, the 68,000 instruction set most of the time makes sense. You know, it's not just three letters, so it makes sense. You can nearly read it. So we took care of VSTAR. Here we are doing the branching, okay? So if we do, if we test it, and it is, it is not set. It is at zero, branch on equal zero, basically. Then we clear it. If it's if it's set, then we go and set it. Set the bit, and then we jump to VStop. Remember, we need to specify where it ends. So we add. We had D2, D0, where we start. We added 2C to it because we need to start from 2C, line 44, at least. And then we add the height. If the height is 16 pixels, we add 16 to D0. And we do the same thing, basically. Now this is quite nearly a copy, just different bits. We test again bit 8. If bit 8 is set then we go and set it and notice here we test um, we set bit 1 of byte number 3 this is this is important okay remember a 1 points to the structure and this 3 means go here so 3 from this point is here Okay, so 3A1, A1 points to here, points to that address, but we are telling it 3, so we are at that address, and we set bit 1, so we set bit 1 for VSTOP. And there you go, if not, we clear it, we clear that bit, and we are doing the same thing, bit clear, bit 1, in byte three of the sprite structure data structure now we go to the x okay and x we have to do the same thing now this might sound strange we're adding one to eight one to eight is because remember we are we start from you know the first the, the first bit doesn't mean one but means two okay so we add one to eight to be into the middle of the screen in a way we test if we are odd or even basically and i'm going to see, show you my comment check so basically we are we are because this one this bit because it's the low bit now it's the first bit if we are even, it's always a zero. If we are odd, it's always a one, this bit. So that's what we are doing here. We test if bit zero is a one or not. If it's not, okay, we go and clear it. So same thing. If it is, we go and set it and notice bit zero so this means bit zero and this is the third byte from our data structure for the sprite then we logical shift right the value of the one we do that because we are starting remember the, the value that we have starts from so we this bit we have already taken care of it so we need to re, to shift it so that we set these bits okay so we 
shift those the value that we had in the one by one. What remains goes into where our sprite structure is and one position one and position one is this is the horizontal position and that's basically it uh, so it treats the values okay so the values of x of v of, of sorry of y and x is going to get them from when we read the joystick and then it's going to set the sprite accordingly okay so all I need to do is add this routine okay and we add it to our code to our game and we shall we edit this uh, after the joystick what before? Now let's do it after the joystick. Okay, so now we have all the routines that we need, but we still cannot move our sprite. Now we need to build the um, game loop basically to build the game loop we need to do the following well so far we had a start remember the startup file always goes jumps to the label start till here we are fine but now we need a loop so What we are going to do is this, okay? We need to branch to our subroutine that waits for the raster line. Wait for raster. Okay, so that's the first thing that we need to do. Then we need to read the joystick, of course. So branch to subroutine. Dot word. I'm using dot word because our code is um, is is not longer than 32k. So dot word is should be fine. And then we do uh, read joystick. Okay. So we've read, we waited for a frame, we read the joystick. Now we need to call branch to subroutine to move the sprite. However, okay, move sprite, and I'm going to bring it on the uh, right hand side now move sprite requires these parameters okay so the first parameter it needs is a1 so we can do uh, LPA Yeah, I should be able to do LDA. Load effective address. And we'll do our sprite. I forgot what they called them. Sprite data. We can call it sprite data. It, it could be also player data or sprite zero. I have more than, for the same position, I have three labels. This is for me to, you know, um, being more. Okay. Let's say at ease uh, in doing things. Um, so let's do SPR. Uh, SPR is 
sige, o no. Into A1. I do not like the completion. So, then, we need to move, um, we need the y and x, and the y and x are called, and I'm going to find the joystick routine now, sprite underscore y, sprite underscore x. So, move that word. And we do sprite underscore y, zero, move the word, sprite underscore x, comma, v1. And there it's it's lucky they are I can see both of them together so that's quite good. Now we need to move we need to tell it that it needs the height and that is 16 now so move the word 16 comma it's a hex v2 okay so we are waiting for the raster, we are reading the joystick, then we move left, right, up or down, then we update the sprite, okay, did we press the left mouse button, if we pressed we exit, but if we did not, we loop, okay, and we continue doing this. Now, as I said, it might be too fast, I'm, I'm I'm not sure, but let's see how it's going to behave. Um, let me prepare the joystick so that I can move it better. Hopefully, I have no issues and I should be able to run it. Oops, there you go. We have an issue. What is the issue? Yeah, abort. We have a build error. So, uh, branch destination out of range for which? Line 63. Ah, that should be where. Yeah, and line 77. Uh, it's the same thing. Ah, this should be word also when we were doing them initially okay they were short but now they should be word um, um because our code is growing so short was working before but nowadays it will not uh, let's run it again okay with success. Okay, there you go. And we have our sprite moving. Okay. And it's reading the joystick and it's moving. It looks like a sprite. It looks like a ghost, I have to say. But, yeah, we can do right now, because the background doesn't really fit, we can do, um, we can hide the image for now. So, if you recall in episode 1, or 2, I can't remember, whether it was 1, I think it was 1. This is the image that we are using. We can remove it and we can create empty space of the same size okay and if we run it let's save it and then run it
we should see this sprite on our screen. There you go. This is our sprite. And we are able to move it anywhere on the screen. Of course, it vanishes. Okay. And same on the left side. Okay. And same at the bottom. We, are, we do not have checks not to move, not to get out of the, from the screen. Ah. If I continue pressing down, you will see that from bottom it comes up to top because then it resets and it starts again. And same for left or right, it comes back. So for those that are used to the Commodore 64 in a way, it is the same behavior, just the, it has a sprite structure um, where you you have the data and on the Commodore 64, you have like a pointer, you tell it in blocks of 64, uh, where the pointer, which block you want to use, while here you have a structure for where it is. So, that was Mr. Pooh moving. Okay. So, I, I, I thought it was going to be too fast, but it, it did. Um, uh, how to say one frame per second? Uh, it, it's quite okay. I mean, I, I thought it's going to be uh, of an issue, but it's not, which is a good thing. So, um, notice also, um, although in this bright structure, so I'm just going to bring this bright structure now. Uh, Although in this sprite structure we defined where is it? we defined a value of 40 and a value of 70 for the x and y, okay. Those are ignored, are all immediately overwritten because our so I, I'm going to leave those there and I'm going to jump on this side. Um, because our joystick routine, okay, here, yeah, the values start from zero, okay. We could have made this, let's say, let's say we want to start from position 100, okay, and let's say 1 to 8. It should be somewhere in the middle of the screen, okay? So let's run it. Also, remember we are still using um, arrows so far. You see, somewhere in the middle of the screen, okay? Exactly precise, but that's if you if we wanted to start from a different position. But the main thing is that zero zero is not. If you recall, I'm just going to bring it again. Zero zero is here where we do not see it basically normally. Okay. However, because of the way the routine was written, zero zero is this part of the screen. Okay, so the routine is helping us in a way in displaying the sprite immediately on the screen and in invisible and visible to us. We have our sprite that moves on the screen, but. If you remember, our game only needs the X. It is only going to move into the X position, not into the Y position. Hence, the first thing that we need to do is change the sprite 
the sorry the joystick routine were only interested in reading and updating the X position. Therefore, okay, we can skip um, parts of the routine and we can make it smaller. So, <coughs> so the this part, okay, where we check for the Y, okay, we um, do not really need it, okay. Hence, we should be able to, for now, we're just going to comment it up, okay? Just to show you what I mean. We don't even need the label because we don't use it. Okay, so. Let's run it. There's always something that you missed, right? So, where is the problem? Uh, oh, yeah, of course. So, that should... Let's do it as enjoy. And here, instead of check Y, it should be... N. Joy. Okay. So now it should be it should be okay. I hope. Uh, yeah. That's it. And let's run it. What else do we have? We have another reference for check Y. Oh, of course. I missed that. <laughs> so, it's successful this time. We should only be able to move it left and right. Okay? And no matter what I do, it only moves left and right. Also, so we have that part. Now, well, I'm going to bring back the screen. There are no more snippets, okay? So now it's actual coding. And let's see that all is fine. We save. So, our sprite now, okay, moves left and right, but it should only move in three positions, being here, in the middle, or to the left, okay? It, it, that's all it needs to move, okay? Nothing else. So, here we need to start defining some stuff, some things, some, some constants, so that we are always in the right position, basically. So, for this, we need a few constants. 
okay let's uh, and as you can see you can also exit with the uh, left mouse button instead of uh, terminating it from when you are from here from the visual studio visual code so we need some uh, uh, constants to be able to uh, make sure that we only move in a certain position so i'm going to add more constants here so these are player position no? because he the player only only needs three positions as middle and there's a reason why I start from middle and that is EQ and that should be if I um, get the design document the simple design document that we have uh, let me find it That should be this. So the first one is position, as you see, starts at position ninety six. So this pride to be at this edge, okay, we need to specify. 96 we need to have 96 but the middle is 96 plus because the width of this plate is 16 plus 16 which is 112 hence okay we can do the following 112 okay then left is I do, not like, I do not like to use the current notation here. Middle and minus 16, no? And right, it is middle plus 16. While we are here, I'm going to define, say, Because this is a block, no uh, screen. So let me put screen. Yeah, yes. Screen there. Because we know that they are constant. In, in future, I might update them better. Normally, I do I do them a bit better. But for now, we have when these grow, I, I normally organize them, organize organizes them in a different way. But for now, because there's not many, there's no need to organize them in the way I'm saying. Um. So that is the player positions. We should have, yeah, for the sprite when it starts, no? So, this should be player x position, possible, player x, player possible x position. And this will be okay, player, and this is start player start position. And we need player 
x and this will be middle so we start with the middle so it's equal to 112 and then uh, player y so now y let's say we start position 30 let's say actually let's do 16 times 3 so 16 is the height and 3 sprites down let's say let's put it like that maybe it needs to be times 2 but um, let's let's put it like that let's do it like that so those are the first uh, few constants that we need for our game now, this is where the thinking needs to happen now. I'm going to test myself how good I am in thinking on the on the stream. <laughs> so now we need to modify the joystick routine. I am not happy that these are here, but for now leave them there. So we know we do not need these. Okay. Now let's separate the left and right. Yeah. Okay. So we need to specify i'm going to show the constants on this side now yeah so we said we start at player this is the y so player y and this is the player x. So that's the first thing. This is where we start. So we are immediately displayed in the middle of the tube. And if we run it actually, let's test it out. We should see ourselves in the middle of the tube, given that I don't have it assembled. So you can see that this sprite is a bit too low. So we know we need to at least move it. Uh, so it needs to be times two, not times three. Um, in in uh, in the um, how high it is. So let's fix that also, which is here, and we make it times two. Now I use constants a lot so that I have one place where I go and change values. Okay, instead of looking for the code where I put, uh, where I have inserted them. Uh, it's a good habit and it is something that I like doing. Now, if we move left, okay, so let's go to the joystick routine. Why did I, I was there, no? Okay, so if we move left, I'm going to divide a bit the code, I think. And let me think a bit. Yeah, we need to read. So, first of all, we need to read the current. X position. 
okay? So I'm modifying the joystick routine now, okay? And we do that into the zero. So read where we are, in which position we are. I'm going to calculate this a bit better. And probably I will also segment a bit the code so it's much more clearer to read. I want to do at least this, the movement of the uh, of the player being fixed and um, being the positions that it needs to be. So, if we move left, uh, sorry, if we're moving right, because now we need to move instead of at one. So we I'm just going to segment a bit. So move right. We need to compare it, no? We need to compare if we can actually move right. If we are in, in the X position already, the maximum that we can reach, then we cannot uh, move more. Okay, so the first thing is Compare dot where, and we need to compare with player um, x plus. Um, actually, we need to compare it with right. Right is middle plus sixteen. Yeah. So if we are already in that position. Then we do not move. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, we exit basically. This can be S because we are this is not going to break anywhere, so it should be okay. And we can do dot and enjoy. So here I'm just going to comment it. We um, already it's so it's so exit. If not, we not at one. We add 16, okay, because we move 16, we add 16 to sprite x, and then we exit, okay, because we do not need to check y, then exit. For the left side, we need to do the same, basically. So, this part is still the same. Okay, that is the same. But, so now, and we do the same thing on the pen. Um, left. No, we are comparing with this one. If we are in that position, then we do not move anymore. Uh, so, come on, it's zero. If so, and 
filter inside. I can copy this code and actually put it here. So if so, we exit. Else we sub now. We sub sixteen to sprite X. And So, basically this is going to give us the three positions that we can move in, left, middle, and right. So, yeah, I just need to comment it like before. So, already on the right, already, already. Yeah. So let's test. Let's test it. And if this works, I'm quite happy because I like this. We have the player movement set up in a way. There are some more adjustments that we need to do to it, but for now it is. It is. It will come later on in the, into the game. Um, but for now it should be good. That means that in the next episode, I should be able to start adding the enemies. So let's see if this is going to assemble. <clears throat> of course, there is always some mistake. Of course, and this is because Vesem is much more not like Epic One. These are capital or not. These are capital, no? I'm still trying to get used to Vezim. I'm, I'm used to Deathpack or Vezim 1, and I'm finding it that Vezim throws more errors and is more, let's say, skeptical. Um, more. Let's see. Anyway, it's a good assembly, don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining about it, I'm just, I just need to get used to it, to what it... Uh... So, up and down we don't move, but we can only move left and right. And now this is the thing, okay? We are moving 16, 16 no? So now to move left and right is quite fast, okay? It's, I'm hardly, hardly finding it difficult to put it in the middle. Okay, it's... it's it's too fast. So I knew we're going to have this issue. So basically we will need to slow it down. Now there's a way we can slow down this for a moment. Instead of updating every frame, we and this is only for now, okay? In future we do not need to do this because the code is still small. Okay, we can um, we can update our sprite. The sprite move check for our joystick move instead of every frame. Let's say every five frames or six frames or I don't know. It depends. I do not know how 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 many we need, but we definitely need a certain delay to be able because we are not. It's moving too fast, basically, from what we go. But it's moving left and right. It's moving. It's, it's moving as it as it should, and it's stopping at the left side and at the right side where it should. There's a. I'm noticing there's a default uh, a bug with the image. There's a. As you can see, there's one pixel. The image should move on the from the on the right side, the wall and the pipe. 
they should move one pixel to the left but anyway this image will change I'm hoping that some of you will help me in uh, having graphics so um, for this game because these graphics are placeholders um, so I really would like it okay it's a simple game but I really would like it to look nice no um, because it will have music and it, it should it should look nice <laughs> let's put it this way and we can release it like a, I mean I will release the code and the game you know for free but it should be it should look nice <laughs> so now to do that and I'm, I'm going to finish with this part but I'm going to do the code for it I'm going to use a small little trick um, where is the yeah so for now I'm going not to use the wake for us then okay and I'm going to let me see how to do this. Uh, compare dot byte. I'm going to wait for line two five six. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, two five five. Sorry, for us the line two five five. And I'm just going to use one. You know the vertical blend. The, the, sorry, not the the raster uh, register is read from two uh, from two. Um, words but i'm only going to use one byte from it so i'm just going to use the bff06 i'm, go I'm just going to compare it is wait 255 if it is not i do so this is the this is the trick okay uh, branch or not equal dot x and we do again mouse Now what I will do, okay, I'm going to copy this several times, two, three, four, five, mm. I'm going to do a second, let's see, I put seven. And I'm going to call each one of this. Let's call it plane. Basically, I'm going to slow it, slow it down drastically. Okay, this is to see the movement properly. And if this is one, one, two, three, four. No, this is FF, this is FP. I will explain what I'm doing, okay? This is E, so this is D, this is C, this is M, D, this is A, and this is <coughs> 9, and this is I think I, I think that there, there is too much, but let's uh, uh, go with this for now, and then 
Okay, so um, we have money. Okay, so now, so that is French to mouse. This is French to frame. Okay, this is frame one, frame two, frame three. In total from zero, we have in total actually um, because this can be frame zero, but in theory, we have not seven frames but eight because we have also the, the mouse. So basically, each time we are looping, but notice uh, I need to, to jump into this one, so I wait for 255. Okay. If when we wait for 255, we we'll wait for 254. But because we are we were in, in 255, then we have to wait another frame. Okay, and that's why I'm decrementing it by one. So the same thing happens here. No, we wait for 254, but then I tell it to wait for 253, but 253 has already passed. Hence, we need to wait for another frame. And like this, I am waiting for in total of eight frames. Okay? So now, if I run it, given there are no issues um, in my code, <laughs> um, we should be able to... Oh. So, what is my build error? Maximum number of errors reached, but for our compare, it's a byte. What is the problem? Yeah. Why is that? So. If I do that, I can't can you make it. See, this is this is where I'm I'm still trying to learn Vasily. I cannot really uh, understand why certain things Vasily complain sometimes. I I'm just guessing. So, again, probably I will have to look it up in the end. Um, so these are fine, except the last one is dead. So what's different between this one and this one? Instruction not supported. On selected architecture. Wow. Uh, hold on, that's an immediate. Wait. Oh. 
of course it doesn't it complains. It's funny that it didn't complain or not or not. That I do not understand. But okay. So I put the I saying it can reach it to force it and it's still and then I didn't notice the hash. Okay. I'm removing the immediate because it's understood it's immediate. Okay. So now hopefully it assembles. Yeah. Come on. Let's see. If I Yeah, you see, now I can stop in the middle. I slowed it down by updating the um, my sprite every so often. And actually, it's still a bit fast, but it's okay because the game is going to grow. So eventually, this will be uh, we will remove those what we did there, and we will insert again the wait for frame, wait for raster line. Um. It's a simple trick in a way. Um, this, this, I mean, you learn this by. The book actually covers this. Um, but all these, okay, once we start coding, once we add the enemies, etc., all these will go and this will come back, okay? This routine will come back. It's because right now there's nothing. So we have all the speed to just move a little sprite, which is in three positions. Hence, we get that, that issue, you know. Um, that is why um, I, have, I have to do that. Um, so thank you very much. Have a good week. And see you next Friday if you don't come in the weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.